Hi everyone. The main purpose of the statement of comprehensive income, uh, you know, definition of comprehensive income is the you know financial document which show in the firm's income and expenditure in a particular time period. So in business, what we are going to do, we are not going to prepare the statements of comprehensive income. We are going to interpret because interpretation is the most important. If you are a businessman, if you are a business director, if you are a marketing manager, if you are a production manager or storekeeper, whatever. If you are a non-financial person, right? If you are a person who actually uh, doing uh, non-accounting information. So business, as I finance for non-finance people. So very important because when you're going to meetings, management meetings, board meetings, sometimes they are giving this financial statement for you. If you can't interpret, if you can't get any idea, you'll be, uh, might be in trouble. Therefore, the main purpose of this lesson is to give you the understanding how to read the financial statement. In financial statement, statement there are certain you know, main elements are there. Namely, uh, you can see the revenue is the main, like a, a key element of the, like always headed by revenue. Revenue is the biggest item, the biggest value in the financial statement, because uh, at the end, this is the total amount of money they generate from the business. So then uh, financial state, what they're going to do from revenue, we are deducting all the expenses, expenses we are deducting. And then we have a keeping some profit margin. So profit means at the end of the uh, deducting all the overheads and the variable costs. So the remaining value we call the profit. So profits is there, gross profit, net profit, operating profit. There are certain profit uh, uh, levels are there. Look at the first level of profit we call gross profit. As I told you, revenue minus cost of sale, that is called the gross profit. And then from gross profit, we can deduct another other all operating, operating expenses, selling expenses, distribution expenses, administration expenses. Uh, and after removing that overheads, the remaining profit value we call the operating profit value. So you can see gross profit and operating profit, it's like that. So you can see how much expenses the business has to deal with. So maximum, that's why organization, most of the managers, uh, workers, entrepreneurs, they want to increase their profit margin. So they want to do, they can do it by decreasing the cost by the increase in the revenue, right? So what happened to the operating profit at the end? Even my previous session, or some of the students actually asking me, so what happened to this operating profit? At the end, the remaining of it is called the residual owners. It's called to retain profit. I told you yesterday, I know regarding like now using the financial statements, we talk about that the remaining profit of the Nestle company, that 2.5 billion, they have credited to the retained profit uh, and distribution profit. So after retained profit only, they have paid dividends for their shareholders, right? So some of the profit made by the business at the end of the year is used to pay taxes, right? So all traders and business partners may be they pay income tax, whereas limited companies pay corporation tax. Right? We, we found out that the from the because sometimes operating profit you got profit before tax, and government also expecting some contribution for the government, about 30 percent uh, that based on their profit. Government also expecting some amount that like we call income tax or corporation tax. After paying the corporation tax to the government, you have a residual profit we call the profit after tax can be distributed to the shareholders so yesterday i have told you that the, the the previous session the in my previous session i told you that in nestle company the total profit they earned during the year after tax now at profit they have redistributed back to the uh, parent company in the switzerland and nestle is a multinational firm so they redistribute they repatriate all the profit they earn from uh, local country to the foreign country their parent company so like that if it's a normal local company what happened to this uh, profit they will be keeping that money. They will be retaining that profit and they sometimes they are using that amount of money for the investment purpose and expansion purposes. For business acquisitions, share market investment, business expansion purposes, this money can be used. If it's a foreign company only, they are 100% profit, they are distributing to the shareholders. But keep in mind, uh, local companies, they are not distributing profit like that. They are keeping large amount of retained profit in the business for the expansion purposes, right? So this is the one we call dividend. So dividend distribution wise, that's why multinational companies always distribute like a, about 99% of the profit or 100% of the profit they are taking out from the country because it's a profit center only. They won't take it to the parent country. But local companies, uh, local owned on companies, they are not distributing 100% profit they earn during the year. They're keeping some, some amount for the reinvestment, business acquisitions, expansion plans at the part of their strategy. So any undistributed profit retained by the business, this may be invested in the business later. This means that the, they may be used to help fund investment project. It may also kept as a reserve in case trading conditions become difficult in the future of 
to help fund expansion. Look at this exit number one. Uh, format 66, they are asking the work out the gross profit and the operative profit. So, in this case, you can see the 2015, they are turned over only 12.56 million, uh, 12.56 million, and the cost of sales 7.6 million. So, difference between uh, selling prior revenue and the cost of sale is a gross profit. So, gross profit here I can calculate 12.56 minus 7.6, the answer is 4.96 is a gross profit. And then from that, if you deduct the expenses, 2.56 minus 2.56, the answer would be 2.4 million US dollars operating profit, right? And distribute 0 0.8 million to shareholder, how much profit is retained? So if you distribute out of this 2.4 million, another 0 0.8 million, to the shareholders as dividend, 1.6 million will be remaining in the business. And then what happened to this profit, they will be using for expansion purposes, future, uh, development purposes, acquisition purposes like that, right? You can see recently, like a, uh, one example, I can say like a, a world famous company, you know, the LVMH, Louis Vuitton and everything, the, they bought uh, um, American fashion brand, right? The American jewelry company uh, out of their profit. So they spend like that, their money. And also another company, Thomas Cook, Right? They almost cook was bankrupt at that time. So uh, Chinese company Fosun, they bought for 14 billion pounds investing because how much they got the 14 billion pounds? The Fosun company has a lot of retained profits like that, right? So like that, they, a lot of company examples are there in the history of the company mergers and acquisitions. You can see where this money generated, the money generated from their profit. That's why the savings are really important if you're a person. Also, if personal savings is also important, if you're a company, definitely savings are important, right? You can see here now uh, the automated production line they have given in this business. So a statement of comprehensive uh, income showed the income and expenses of a business during the financial year. Uh, up until recently, the statement of comprehensive income was called the profit and loss account. So keep in mind the, the old term was profit and loss account, but recently, like from they say 2013 onwards, like about uh, seven years, six years ago, they have called it statement of comprehensive income. Therefore, we call PNL account now we known as a SOCI, SOCI statement of comprehensive income. Look at the format of this uh, comprehensive income. Usually, there are two columns coming year on year, 2016 and 2015, right? If you say this is 2021, 2020 column is there always in the business organization, and this is a format of that thing: revenue, cost of sales, gross profit and then deduct the other expenses, administration expenses, other operating expenses, and we have, we call it operating expenses. Before we deduct the financial expenses, we call it operating expense, operating profit. From operating profit, if you remove the finance costs that we call the profit for the year or net profit, new term is profit for the year. From profit for the year, if you deduct taxation, we call the profit after tax, profit before tax, profit after tax. You can see right now, Revenue increased to 4,900 to 5,400. Profit, the bottom line increased to 700 to 730. So that's why always as investors, they actually go through the bottom line. Bottom line. So bottom line concept actually very important. Now we see as investors, a lot of CEOs, chairmen are looking at the, the always the world actually uh, uh, thinking about the triple bottom line. So what, are the, what is the triple bottom line concept? It's normally a very important concept called Triple bottom line. Triple bottom line concept. Triple bottom line concept means first bottom lines you must think about your financial financial bottom line. Financial bottom lines mean the monetary value you created during the year. So a lot of actually, I think I'm guessing like a 90%, 100% people actually think about the financial bottom line. Second one is normally what is their humanitarian, like a human activities, welfare, human. Welfare. You have to think about how much you contribute to the world, how much you contribute to the humans, humanitarian, your workers. Third one is the environmental welfare. Right? Environmental welfare. So these are the main uh, triple bottom line. Most of the businessmen, they are not caring about the human welfare and your environmental welfare. Human in the sense that we can talk about their uh, employee and your other one, customer. 
employed customers and general public everyone right normal like a normal people also coming and what they have done for this human right not only money that's right monetary value is only just a one pillar of the success if you want to be a successful company successful corporate organization you have to think about all these three ends financial success human welfare how much what is the what is the contribution you have done for this world as a man as a organization as a corporate citizen and what kind of impact you done for the environment for the development of the uh, environment right because we, without proper environment we don't have we don't have enough huh? sometimes money is money will be there you generate what if you what happen if you don't so much of environmental damage huh? can people stay without oxygen can't no? can people uh, stay without the like a trees no so it's very important that's why you have to as a business organization think about the triple bottom line concept the financial success the human welfare success and the environmental welfare these all these three ends are really important that's why in dealing with the statement of comprehensive income you always give more priority for the financial success but this including uh, some contribution you have to do with the environmental as well as the humanitarian activities also you have taken some this project we call csr some people they don't believe in csr but this is the csr concept really important corporate social responsibility right so these elements uh, ex explanations are here i know that you can understand revenue means the total amount of money you receive by selling goods and services right and cost of sale means as i told you the direct cost that you have incur in order to uh, sell that sales you know how much direct material direct you know, purchases have you incur in order to buy those materials called the cost of sales and gross profit means the difference between the uh, cost revenue minus cost of sale and admin expenses including they are giving example of his salaries expenses like you know senior staff stationery it expenses accounting fees telephone bills right everything utility bills comes under administration uh, other operating expenses including the like sometimes sub company subscription stationery postage office supplies like kind of miscellaneous activities sometimes can be donations right it can be some kind of a welfare program this comes under other operating expenses and other most important thing is selling expenses people spend billions of money on marketing sales selling and distribution this is called selling expenses and the after deducting we call operating profit that's a uh, selling uh, price minus administration costs and the other operating expenses subtracted from the gross profit we call the operating profit right uh, after deducting finance costs finance costs are involved in this thing like a payment of interest right finance uh, income plus finance expense like a if you take some bank loan you have to settle the bank loan with the interest if you take an overdraft you have to settle the overdraft with the interest if you take a lease leases you have to pay and higher purchase you have to pay high. all this comes under financial expenses if you deduct financial expenses the remaining portion we call the profit for the year profit for the year profit for the year means the total cost of finance of is subtracted from the operating profit that we call the profit for the year right and also what is profit after year profit after year tax profit after tax pat simply known as profit after tax because the government you cannot actually ignore the government that is important stakeholder for a business so business organization has to after uh, your know, profit for the year minus total income tax the corporation tax you have to deduct and then remaining one we call the pat or profit after tax that is 100% belongs to our shareholders right 100% belongs to our shareholder here you can see this activity also uh this case they have a revenue and cost of sale you have to find the missing figures like that i think that's a easy question for you you know you know find the missing figures what you have to do here 929.2 x 11.1 then you can find out the missing figure the difference between those two 29.2 uh minus 11.1 the answer coming 18.1 like that you can easily like a fill in the blank questions are there here but normally uh go through the format and familiarize with the format right in this case they have revenue this much cost of sale uh, gross profit expenses operating profit uh, financial cost profit for the year taxation and profit these are basics only this is just a basic rough idea that's why in future uh, when you are doing actual financial statement as i mentioned when you are going you will you will you can learn so many things uh, in this level you are going to understand the basic interpretation the basic financial statement only right so i think you can work out the missing values of the cost of sale profit for the year and the operating profit comment on the performance of the business uh, over the two years performance as you can see the revenue actually 2015 to 16 dropped 29 to 26 
so it's actually a little bit you know uh, slow down the their growth uh, but if you compare with the gross profit you can see it's 11.1 again 9.5 you can see 2015 performance 2016 performance it's a little bit uh, drop right but we had to analyze the other thing profit for the year also uh, how much is the after taxation uh, how much they earn actually so then for that items we have to get the uh, gross profit minus all these expenses operating profit is there 6.3 so 6.3 and minus finance expenses, profit for the year, 4.67. You can see last one is 4.7 uh, million minus 1.6 million. The profit for the year is 3.1. So that means net profit also decreased 3.1 million to 2.2 million. So overall picture, you can see the company performance gone down. Percentage decrease also you can find out final minus initial divided by initial into 100. That is this kind of a question I think I, our past papers they have we found calculation question find out the percentage decrease percentage increase uh, change of the profit like that so we can find out commenting about the performance section performance is actually bad 2015 to 16 performance gone down that's why there's one advantage benefit of repairing this business can find out whether the performance what is the momentum what is the trend what is the company uh, uh, focusing on going on are they going like a deep you know, financial trouble or are they going in a good way or uh, they're going down like that and also we can compare their business with the other similar businesses. In this case, they are producing software computer games. So they can compare with other similar type of businesses uh, of software developers in their area. And they can find out whether they are doing a good job or not. Right. So I think you got a very good understanding today. So we talk about mainly the key elements of the financial uh, comprehensive income. Uh, we go through this case study about two activities. So I hope you uh, enjoy the session. We talk about the mainly the three elements. In my next session, I'm going to explain you what is the main uh, advantage, what is the main benefit of preparing comprehensive income for a businessman, uh, why we preparing such a very good business investment. It's a mandatory thing, first of all. And what are the other key advantages of preparing this thing for a different different stakeholders, for a managers, for investors, for employees, and all. We are going to find out what are the main benefits of preparing the statement of comprehensive income okay from that we'll uh, wind up our session see you in my next session thank you very much to everyone bye bye miss uh...